All right, here we go. Speed. I am speed. There's a whole lot of winners, and then there's me. And I didn't eat breakfast this morning. Oh, breakfast. Man, maybe I should have had breakfast. Brecky could be good for me. No, 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 no. Stay focused. Speed. I am faster than fast, quicker than quick. I am Leon S. Kennedy. And in the immortal words of Doug Williams, I must be like butter. Speedrunning. Yes, I know that I already did a video on Slay the Spire speedrunning a couple months back, but we're gonna go over it again here just for the newcomers who don't know what speedrunning is. Speedrunning is completing a game as quickly as humanly possible. Now, if you want a really good explanation on speedrunning and the speedrunning community, I would highly recommend going to check out Nakey Jakey's video. It is a fantastic video, but also anything that Carl Jobs does is incredible and anything Tomato Anus does also really helps kind of set the tone for what speed running is but with that out of the way I need to tell this story March 23rd 2023 Capcom releases Resident Evil 4 remake which is arguably the biggest game for Resident Evil speedruns since the original game the original is one of the most speed ran games of all time and this new one is just that old one but even better it has been a huge speedrunning game. So the remake came out, the speedruns were off the charts, and I had a plan. But you see, they say once you peek behind the curtain, the magic is lost. What do they mean by that? Once you see how a film is made, once you see how music is made, how a book is written, you can lose some of that magic when you enjoy that thing. You can't set aside what you've learned and view something objectively anymore because part of you always knows kind of how they made something. I have heard this a million times. I don't know who first said it, but I used to hear it all the time. Never peek behind the curtain or the magic is lost. Well, I say that little anecdote because I have spent the past four months- Pause. Sorry, editor Jaden here. I just wanted to let you know that I have actually only been doing this for one month. I don't know why I said four months, but for the rest of the video, I will continue to say one month because I started this early April. I uh, don't know why I said four, sorry about that. Learning what it means to actually be a speedrunner. Once I got all the achievements I wanted to and I felt really done with Resident Evil 4, the grinding began. I began practicing, I was routing, I was studying, I was absolutely learning the game inside and out, all of the glitches, everything it took to be an any percent speedrunner. And you know what? I fucking hated it. I hated it so, okay, so much. Just let me, let me explain. <laughs> I have admired speedrunning for years and once Resident Evil 4 dropped, I thought it was finally my time. Finally, I had the chance to wedge my way into the community and become one of the people that I loved so much that I have admired for so long. I have uh, since discovered that my love of speedrunning is better from afar. Cause I just, it just wasn't for me. So as someone with ADHD, I jump games, TV shows, books, hobbies constantly. So why I thought that I could dedicate myself to one game played over and over and over again for an entire month 
I, I, I don't know. I'm a bi I'm big dumb, I think. I think that's what they call me. I don't know why I thought this could work. But the thing is, is I was inspired. I have loved the speedrunning community for ages. People like Carl Jops and Waifu Runs inspired me to start this. Resident Evil 4 Remake was the perfect game for me to start practicing how to speedrun. It was already established with a speedrunning community because people were just gonna be coming over from the original. Resident Evil evil games are kind of designed in a way that makes them perfect for speedrunning, and this remake was the absolute pinnacle of that. With so many game-breaking glitches, you can just skip entire parts. Really, really fun routing, really cool boss fights and skips, and I thought this was gonna be perfect. And then I tried it, and I bounced right off of it. I did not have the willpower to stick with this and really see through a speed run. I just, I just couldn't do it. I didn't even come close. So what was my personal experience with running Resident Evil 4? Uh, okay, you know what? All right. Bye, cute Thulu. We're having class, all right? Let me give you this story. I wanted to run the any percent professional category. You might be saying, Jaded, that is the most competitive and difficult category. And to that I would say, yes. But over the month that I tried to speed run this game, here's what happened. I discovered this cool glitch. Wow, it's really cool. I think I'm gonna practice how to, oh, oh, the glitch has been banned from the category? Okay, no, that's, that's fine, that's totally fine. Oh wow, hey, here's this other glitch. This is vital to the any percent category. This is really cool. I think I'm gonna practice, oh, what's that? Oh, it's been patched out? Oh, I, I don't know how to down patch a game. Uh, I'm gonna have to learn? Okay, oh well here's this other glitch. Wow, that looks really cool. I think I'm gonna practice that. How in the fuck did anyone ever pull off this glitch? I don't understand, it's too fucking hard. So whatever, we'll just, it's fine. We don't need to do that glitch. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that glitch from before that was banned? Oh, it's been unbanned? Motherfuckers, I haven't even finished one run. Can we please calm down? My personal issue with speedrunning is that I am far too much of a perfectionist to even remotely get good at this. I practiced each level over and over and over again until I could consistently get glitches, specific time skips. I wanted to know a level inside and out before I moved on. And so I would spend hours on like one level at a time, specifically chapter one, because that fucking village sucks. And that's just terrible. That's just not good for speed running. I burnt myself out long before I even completed an entire speed run of the whole game. It was not a good strategy for me. I should have just learned some of the glitches and just played through a whole game, gotten a subpar time, and from there kind of rerouted, figured things out, carved time off. That, that's not, that's not how I did it. And that is just not conducive to a good speedrunning learning experience. So while I was just practicing one area over and over and over again, there were massive community changes going on specifically for this category, banning glitches. There was a patch that removed so many glitches. And so I had to completely reroute and relearn strategies before I had even completed a run and understood how the run worked in the first place. Place. And so there were giant streamers who were dropping big, fat time drops and PBs while I couldn't get out of the fucking village. And it was absolutely discouraging and just plain boring. But you know what wasn't boring? The community! <laughs> this whole experience, this entire month spent on this fucking game reminded me why I truly love speedrunning. I have loved speedrunning for years and have never actually tried speedrunning myself until now. So then how did I still enjoy it? Let me give you an example. When this game came out, Waifu Runs, who is an absolutely awesome Devil May Cry and Resident Evil speedrunner, please absolutely go check him out, was hosting a massive speedrun contest for the professional any percent category. 
This contest had over $10,000 in winnings. I think the final total was like 16 k or something. It was ridiculous. And it was a fucking blast. It was so cool. The final four contestants streamed their roots live on Waifu's channel, and it was fucking awesome. And the winner of this contest, Spicy, went on to break the two hour boundary for Resident Evil 4. And right now he owns the world record. He holds it in his hands at sub 150. Fucking crazy, considering that I couldn't even finish the game. <laughs> this game is in its infancy in terms of speed running. Resident Evil 4 has been absolutely broken forwards and backwards left and right, but this game isn't even two months old yet. And these guys have already dropped past the one hour and 50 minute mark. I cannot even begin to imagine what else is in store for this game. More glitches that can be discovered, more crazy shit that happens. Who fucking knows? <laughs> but that is why I love speedrunning. It's the competition. It's the sportsmanship. These runners are not going, hey, I can't believe he beat my time. It's like, holy shit, he beat my time? How did he do it? That's crazy. How can I learn from this? And it is so wholesome. It's incredible. It is mesmerizing feats of human skill. But most importantly, the thing that I have learned, my biggest takeaway from this entire month is that this is one of the most welcoming and kind communities I have ever ever been a part of. Never before had I actually engaged in the community I loved so much. I was just kind of a creepy stalker in the background, watching fat, massive PBs, enjoying these speedrunning video essays, loving the community from afar. But now that I had joined the community, I could not have been given a warmer welcome. As a tiny little noob to speedrunning and specifically speedrunning the Resident Evil 4 remake, I joined the official RE4 speedrunning Discord and it was heavenly. They had pinned tutorials on live split, how to get the Resident Evil 4 auto split to work when the massive glitch occurred that wiped out pretty much every door rifle glitch in the game. They had a pinned tutorial on how to down patch the game so you could keep running. What I had very basic plebeian dumbass questions, a million people were there to answer them for me really quickly and very kindly. I wasn't alone in trying to learn this speed run. There were people who were eager to help me learn. It was crazy. They wanted to see more people run the game because the more people who run, the bigger the community gets. The bigger the community gets, the more glitches can be found, the more experience can be had, the faster this game can get. The bigger the community, the cooler the speed runs are gonna get. And they were so, so welcoming. It was just, it was inspiring to watch. For instance, and I'm actually, we're gonna go back, we're going back to school for this one. <laughs> By the time I joined the Discord, the entire community had been brought together to stress touch a glitch known as Duffel Bag. And we're gonna take a hard left turn real quick. We're gonna go off on a tangent because I need to talk about this glitch. It is the funniest fucking thing in the entire world. Also, it'll kind of help uh, give you some context. So at the end of chapter 15, Ashley and Leon are about to succumb to their Las Plagas infection. And in order to save her, Leon has to fight through all of these visions of Los Illuminados, carrying Ashley's dying body, fighting the infection inside of him in order to get to Luisa's lab and rip the Plagas from her, saving her. Normally in the game, this is a really, really cool moment. It's really intense. It's very cinematic, but it's also about two minutes of just slow ass walking and in a community known for speed, that's not good. That's just not gonna cut it. So a speedrunner by the name of Hayes Blade discovered that if you fall out of the map at a certain location, the game will basically reset Leon where he was. But in the process of doing so, it completely ruins his animations. Why this glitch works? Uh, but now when Leon saves Ashley, instead of carrying her in his arms like a dying woman and just fighting through his anger and his pain, uh, he just kind of slings her under his arm like, you guessed it, a duffel bag. And so now Leon can just 
walk at normal speed, slinging Ashley under his arm, saving upwards of 40 fucking seconds. It is beautiful. It's important to know that while I complained about the fact that this glitch had been banned and then unbanned, before I had even finished a run, it is really commendable to look at what actually happened here. You see, the mods of this specific category basically sent out a community call to stress test the fuck out of this glitch to get the poop on the robot. And what they had discovered was that this glitch is essentially hardware locked. Being hardware locked essentially meant that the glitch was significantly easier to pull off for those who had installed Resident Evil on an MVME SSD and not a standard SSD. This was essentially a paywall for those on lower end hardware. And so in an attempt to even the playing field, the community just flat out banned duffel bag, even though it was a fucking hilarious glitch that actually saved a significant amount of time. The fact that it alienated specific prices in hardware just wasn't part of the competitive nature. And that to me is incredibly commendable. But that was on April 19th. Uh, so a week later, on April 26th, the same moderator who said that the glitch was banned said that uh, he had been tagged by a bajillion people who were stress testing the fuck out of this glitch, really trying to figure out how it worked. Uh, and they did, they got the poop on the robot. They discovered that you can consistently pull off this glitch on any difficulty. Then another week passed and after significant testing and research, uh, it was official. As of May 8th, the duffel bag glitch is good to go back in all any percent runs because they have found out how to get it to consistently happen on any difficulty on any hardware. So over the course of a few weeks, this glitch was discovered, then banned, and then researched to all fucking hell and back to then be unbanned all to save just 40 seconds oh my god Mwah. fucking beautiful all in the dedication to go fucking faster but the reason i went on that whole tangent about the duffel bag glitch was to show you what i love about speedrunning even though i bounced off of the actual act of putting the strats of speedrunning to use I was there to see the progress. I got excited whenever there was a new tag in the announcement tabs of the Discord because something crazy was happening. I had discovered that people had found a way to completely hide certain cosmetics that were giving them benefits and runs, and so now it's an official rule when you speed run that you have to show what costume you are specifically wearing either before or after your run in the submitted clip. I would never have known that was even a thing had I not been following this community. So let's circle back to the idea of peeking behind the curtain. I'm gonna make a blanket statement here. Whoever said that peeking behind the curtain ruined the magic, you're dumb. You are a big dumb baby and you pee and poo poo in your big dumb baby pants because that's just not true. If you love art, movies, books, if you love communities like speed running, if you like blacksmithing, if you like stained glass, blowing glass, or if you like anything, learning what it takes, learning the human skill and talent that goes into what you love will not ruin your love of that thing. It can deepen your appreciation for it. It can broaden the experience that you feel when you engage in these things. It makes it better. It just does. If you like video games, learning about the people and the effort and the artists and the programmers and the musicians and the coders and everything that goes into making a video game, you, you see you see your games in a different way. You understand the amount of work and effort that went in to give you this piece of work. And when I was learning how to speed run, I found a deeper, better appreciation and love for this community because I saw firsthand the amount of effort, the amount of skill, the amount of grinding, the amount of practice that it took to fucking get where they were. And I do not have the willpower for that. I have loved speedrunning for years. And this whole month did nothing but deepen my love for speedrunning even more. 
for the first time since I discovered what speedrunning first was years ago, did I actually feel like I belonged to the community. And that was special to me. I had these grand plans to try to get at least sub 230 and submit a run to speedrun.com and talk about how cool that was. And I'm kind of glad I didn't do that because that's not what I love about speedrunning. I'm glad I tried this. It was really, really cool. Now I know what I love about speedrunning, and now I know that the actual act of doing the thing really fast, it's just not for me. But over the course of this month, I was shown one of the most welcoming and kind online communities I have ever experienced in my life. I was shown that I can love speedrunning without having to be a speedrunner. I can enjoy these feats and the skills of these players from afar. I can support them at GDQ. We can raise money for cancer. I can be a part of this community. Yeah, but I don't actually have to run, thank God, because fuck that, I am never doing this ever again. Y'all are fucking crazy for that.